morning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food man. That's what I am. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. <laughs> And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks. We're back with you. Really excited about this. We have Groucho Marks' personal assistant, Steve Stoyer, with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are things in Georgia? Man, it is great. It is great. I guarantee you that's right. And man, I'll tell you what, to hang out with Groucho Marx, I mean, like one of the legends, not only the greats, but the legends, man. How did it feel to be hanging around somebody like that? It was it was a, a life-changing experience because I was what I considered the most fanatical Marx Brothers fan around and Groucho was always my favorite, and all I ever wanted to do was shake his hand and thank him for all the laughs, but I knew he was in his 80s and in frail health, and I was certain I would never, ever get to meet him. <clears throat> but I I appear to have been wrong in that assessment, because through uh, an extraordinary set of circumstances that involved my starting up a petition drive to get Animal Crackers re-released in 1974, which it had been uh, tied up in legal knots for years, and Universal didn't think there was any reason to spend good money to take an old Marx Brothers movie off the shelf that hadn't been seen in decades. And that got me in touch with Groucho's publicist and uh, manager, and I ended up meeting my hero. Uh, I was a student at UCLA, and we had a, a petition table on Bruin Walk where the students walked back and forth gathering signatures, and Groucho came to school one day. I said, Groucho, I am very happy to be meeting you after all this time. And he said, well, you should be. <laughs> that sounds lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then Aaron Fleming, who was the woman who was his personal manager, said, this is Steve Stolier. He's the one who's trying to get Animal Crackers re-released. And Groucho said, well, did you get it? And I said, not yet, but we're working on it. And he said, you better or I'll fire you. That sounds and like... I said, I, I didn't realize I was working for you. How much am I how much are you paying me? And he said, A little less than nothing. And we were off and running and talking to each other with all these cameras and microphones pushed in our face. <clears throat> and darn if we didn't succeed in getting the movie re release, which broke the box office record at the UA Westwood Theater that had been set by the French Connection. That was very gratifying. Oh Lord, yeah. <clears throat> And I was, huh, I was rewarded with this plum job of working for my hero right inside his house in Beverly Hills for what turned out to be the last three years of his life. And since my job started during summer vacation, I, I started out working seven days a week because I couldn't get enough of it. Right. I had so wanted to connect with my idol that I couldn't see the point of spending any days sitting in the family house in Tarzana not being at Groucho. So it was just an extraordinary experience being able to talk with my hero comfortably over the lunch table and uh, meeting, well, let me see, there were still two brothers left. Chico and Harpo had died in the early 60s, 
but the two straight men, Zeppo and Gummo, were still alive, and they lived in Palm Springs, and they would come up to visit Groucho. So I really I got to meet three of the five Marx Brothers, and just an extraordinary array of people I respected in front of and behind the camera, and again, under really comfortable circumstances, because they would come over for lunch or a party or to visit. Well, let me ask we, you this question. Was Groucho, like, yeah. when he was on, uh, you know, like, in the public, you know, he's always one-liners, always this little, was that the way he was in real life, or is that just, I mean? It, yes, uh, and which I thought was wonderful. I mean, he was, at, at his heart, he was a, a very serious man. Um, as a matter of fact, when he was a child, his nickname for him from his mother was Der Dunkel, which was German for the dark one, because right. he was moody. And, and it wasn't for nothing that, you know, Julius adopted Groucho as his stage name, because he could be grouchy and grumpy and, you know, right. others of the seven dwarfs. But the sense of humor offset the seriousness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one problem he had, though, was that it became difficult for him to genuinely insult someone because it was such a trademark that they'd be, thri <laughs> they'd be thrilled. <laughs> so he could be at a restaurant and say to the waitress, you know, the soup tastes like dishwater. And she'd go, oh, that's, oh, wait till I tell the cook. He'll be so happy. <laughs> so, oh, Lord. But, yeah, he, you know, as I say, he was old and frail and wasn't, I mean, he was, you know, he was in his 80s and had had uh, a couple of strokes. But the mechanism that made him Groucho was still there. So right. you would hand him a straight line. He used to love to get the um, the entertainment trade papers each day with his mail and then at the lunch table, he would come and sit down and kind of review what I brought him. And one day he said, wonderful mail you brought me today. Nothing but requests for money. <laughs> and I said, but you got a variety, didn't you? And he said, yes, a variety of requests for money. That is so funny. Which was, you know, he would have phrased it the same way in the 20s or 30s or 40s. But you know, that's they the were, thing. There's a lot of people that's, you know, you see them in the public, but then when they're home, they're completely different, you know, and then there's some that's, that's yeah. just them. That's just the way they are. You know, that's like, that is the way they are. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, that's really he, cool. He, I think it was such a reflex with him that even though he had suffered, you know, strokes and hardening of the arteries and slowing down, the reflex that had been so finely honed over all those years was still there. He got... He got a tin of candied almonds from uh, Fred Allen's widow one Christmas, and he was walking past my room at his house and said, by the way, send her one of my Christmas cards. And I said, don't you want to say anything personal? And he said, well, tell her thanks for the nuts. Hope you're the same. <laughs> so now all this has led to a book and possibly a movie, right? Yes. Uh, I wrote a book. People for years would say, "Why don't you write a book about your experiences?" And I, because I'm perennially shortchanging what I can do and underestimating it, I thought, "Well, I, you know, it was such a postscript to his career. I'm such a footnote to his life." But I sat down and started writing it, and darn if I didn't end up with a book called "Raised Eyebrows: My Years Inside Groucho's House." Uh, Woody Allen said it was one of the best books about a show business icon he'd ever read. And Dick Cavett said it reads like a good novel. He wrote the introduction for it. Oh, that's great. And, it, and it, again, it isn't a biography. It's about this kid, because I was only 19 when I got the job, this, this huge super fan right. getting to meet his hero. And then the dark side was dealing with his mortality and also how mercurial this Aaron Fleming that I mentioned before could be this young, ambitious woman that was sort of in charge of his life. Right. So it has been optioned and is currently being developed as a motion picture. Uh, I'm co-executive producer and co-wrote the screenplay, 
and it's going to be absolutely surreal to see someone playing me at 20 with what I then had my mutton chop. Well, it's it's too I bad said. Brad Pitt's in his 50s. Yes, you know, we're just not going to even offer him the role of Steve. There you go. Because he's just too old to play 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be my choice, though. But anyway, so now, how far are we involved in the movie? I mean, how, I mean, have we have you got anybody as far as actors or anything? Or what stages are you in? Uh, I can't, I can't talk about the specifics, but I think we have a Groucho lined up, and we have someone to play young Steve, and are currently searching for an actress with the chops to play Aaron Fleming. But we have a director, and we have a production company, and they paid me for the rights to the book. So they're very serious about following through on this, and we hope to shoot it by the end of the year, but it's contingent upon lining up the ducks. Oh, yeah. Not the one not the one that drops down from the ceiling when you say the secret word. The other ducks that you are supposed to line up before you move ahead. As we say but here, you got to get your ducks in a row. In a row, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't know how easy it is to herd ducks. No, it's but. not. It's not at all. It's not at all. I'm excited. I can't wait. I mean, I'm a big Groucho fan. I think anybody that oh, that is in that likes comedy and 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 you know and and I don't like the stuff nowadays much. I I love the dry bar stuff that they got out. Far as the stand up yeah. and this and other, but far as the TV stuff or, or the, yeah. in that area. Well, this you know the movie will be primarily a drama, but with humor and comedy through it right. because we're dealing with mortality. And, you know, sort of like people who care for an aging grandparent or parent, and plus the volatility of, you know, this woman, but also this endearing relationship between this aging hero and this devoted fan, uh, which I was. I mean, uh, he was always my priority when I was working there. And it was just an amazing, you know, I got to meet Mae West and Bob Hope and Jack Lemmon. And oh, Steve Lord. Allen and, yeah, it, it, and people from behind the scenes, the writers, the directors. And it was just a really rich experience for me to go through. So, the, yeah, the book is called Raised Eyebrows, My Years Inside Groucho's House. And it's available in book form or Kindle or audio book with me reading all the voices. Oh, that's cool. And uh, you can find it on Amazon, not not along the Amazon. I want to make that clear so no one flies down to the rainforest looking for a book about Groucho Marx. So, so I can tell, Amazon. I can tell you with your humor that you've been around Groucho just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we were sort of kindred spirits. Yeah, but what, you know, his name was Julius Henry Marx, and once I said, I said to him, you know, we have the same middle name, Henry. And he said, well, just because we have the same middle name, it doesn't automatically make you funny. Yeah. And I said, well, but when I tell people my middle name, they laugh. And he said, well, and they're just easy laughers. <laughs> so it was just an amazing thing. Plus this man from 1890, whose firsthand memories went from before the Wright brothers to after the moon landing. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A, a huge swath of of history in his lifetime yes you're right i mean honestly i mean golly i asked him once how far back do you remember and he said i guess the spanish-american war was 1898 so i you know he was literally a victorian although he was american right uh he was born in 1890 now what year what year did he die 77 just shy of his 87th birthday wow and, it, you know, it was time. There's that horrible feeling of not wanting to let someone go, but realizing that their quality of life yeah. is, you yeah. know. Yeah. But uh, most of it, like Dorothy says at the end of The Wizard of Oz, some of it was frightening, but most of it was wonderful. And that's sort of how I look at those years that I was fortunate to spend inside that house with my hero oh, i mean unreal yeah i cannot imagine i cannot imagine and the good thing about it we've got all the all the history of his movies and everything he's been involved in over the years yeah we can. still have those we yeah. don't have to go searching through tv guide and circling at three in the morning they're going to show something because now everything's streaming or dvd or right. they're so accessible now i envy 
how easy it is for people now to see these movies. Well, I'm excited. I mean, this movie that's coming out, I can't wait. And uh, actually, the book, I'm going to order it now as soon as we get off the air. And uh, because I just love this kind of stuff, you know, I love the uh, the history. Yeah, that's where it's all at, you know. Yeah, that's where it's all at. Well, we're wrapping up on about time for a break, okay. but uh, tell them again one more time how they can get your book. Uh, raised Eyebrows, My Years Inside Groucho's House. They can get it on Amazon, or if they'd like to get a signed, inscribed, personalized copy from me, you can order it from my website, which is Steve Stolier, S-T-O-L-I-A-R, dot com, and I would be happy to sign a copy and send it in the direction of uh, whomever is is interested. Man, I sure do appreciate you taking your time. I want to get you back on because I don't know when this movie gets started and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So we'll get you it's back a on. Deal. Yep, I sure appreciate it. All right, you, thank you, and uh, you take care of yourself. Thank you for listening. This is Stephen Phillips, host of The Morning Dish. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot more interviews out there to listen to. Plus, you can listen online every morning at WJULradio.com or Lake 97.7 WJUL. And give us a like on our Facebook page, The Morning Dish.